lecture by Dr. Tessie Thomas. We are extremely honored to have amidst us Dr. Tessie Thomas, the Agni Putri of India. A warm welcome to you, ma'am. I also extend my welcome to Major Joy Das Gupta. We are honored to have you here, sir. I would also like to welcome all the faculties, other dignitaries and students who have gathered here to be a part of the lecture series organized in association with Tatwa 11. A very warm welcome to one and all. I now invite Santosh Dambi sir to give the welcome address. Respected dignitaries on the dais, my esteemed colleagues uh, from the faculty and from the non-teaching staff, uh, my dear students, dear participants, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen, I have great pleasure to stand before you this day. Uh, I think all of us uh, have been eagerly waiting for this day and uh, the organizers, I think uh, they were pressurizing me day in and day out to see that uh, um, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Tessie Thomas, Agni uh, Putri of India, she is here. And finally, it has become a reality. So, uh, with a very, uh, I think we are all very proud that we could make it this time. I, uh, uh, I cordially invite, uh, welcome, Mrs. Tessie Thomas to this function. Thank you. In fact, uh, it was very difficult for her to make this visit. When I contacted her, uh, she was quite busy with the uh, preparations for the launch of the Agni um, missile. In fact, one was over last month end and uh, two more are scheduled for the coming month, early coming month. So it was quite difficult for her, and, but uh, she was somehow very magnanimous to give us an opportunity uh, finally. So I personally and on behalf of the organizers express my thanks to her and once again I welcome her to this function. I, I take this opportunity to also welcome Major uh, Das Gupta uh, who has been here and who would like to talk about career opportunities in India to the participants to this function. I Thank you, sir. I now request the dignitaries on stage to join the audience. And I invite Dr. Tessie Thomas, the Missile Woman of India, to inspire the audience with her thoughts. That is based on the role, the strategic and the tactical. The moment I said tactical is the short range, uh, quick reaction systems. We have uh, Akash class of missiles. And the strategic one is the one which carries the nuclear weapons. So we have that ranging from 500 km to, uh, to now 5000 km range. Here, it's a long range ballistic missile systems and multi-stage. It can, it can be achieved only by going into different stages. I'll come, up, uh, come to you to talk with us how do we do the staging to optimize the range, get, to get the maximum range. And highly sensitive to the error. You have to have a uh, maximum accurate systems so that we achieve the target within a few uh, meters. Today we are uh, with the present navigation systems with the GPS uh, aided systems. We are able to pinpoint within uh, 20 meter accuracy we have already achieved the target. And highly unstable. When I say When I say uh, the long range systems, you can't make it st stable because the CG versus the center of pressure, we have to, the difference between that becomes the static margin or the stability. So you can't have both. The trade off has to be there, either stable system, but at the same time, unstable system, we have to have a good controllability. If you can have a good controllability to the system, 
then we can go ahead with that. This class of all these class of systems are initially to be unstable. But while re-entering, we need to make it stable. That's all of these series comes under that. Then based on the role of the uh, role to be performed, that is surface to surface, air to surface, air to air. So different categories of missiles are there. Prithvi, which is surface to surface, and uh, air to air. Akash class. Then we have air to air uh, Astra. It's a fast uh, moving uh, missile. Air to surface Seagull. That is the and anti tank missiles against a uh, tank. We uh, fire a missile. Ballistic missile again uh, gets categorized depending on the range. The short range ballistic missiles from 50 to 500 kilometer. Medium range ballistic missile 500 to 1500 kilometer. IRBMC, intermediate range ballistic missile, 1500 to 5000. And above 5000, we call it the intercontinental ballistic missiles. We have another category which is the surface to surface, which is cruise missiles, that is flying at a low altitude, as low as a treetop, 30 meter height. It can fly for long durations. The advantage of this is that no radars uh, can detect this. That is the, uh, something like Brahmos class of missiles. Our, uh, altogether, our missile DRDO program, we have surface to air missiles. C cube system is working on it. Air to air, beyond visual range, we are able to move on to that to the terminal guidance. That is fantastic anti tank missile. I think that video is playing it. Anti-tank missile uh, video what has uh, been shown, hitting at uh, the, the tank is destroyed in seconds of time. And cruise missiles, the other one is the Brahmos one. And we have developed the anti-ballistic missile defense, that is missile against a missile. You would have seen the drama in the TV serial, two arrows coming and just hitting. It is as simple as that uh, to see or visualize. But the technology behind it, uh, where we had endothermic, that is lower altitude, as well as exo uh, atmospheric, from 48 kilometer, hitting two missiles each other. And uh, those things are perfectly uh, demonstrated that India is the only country, consecutively, all the three flight tests has been successful. <laughs> all with all our C4I systems, the networks, uh, networking at uh, so many stations, all coordinating and getting a perfect impact. It was uh, really an excellent uh, mission. And then comes the strategic systems for which I am uh, working for, the Agni class. We have uh, ranges from 300 kilometers to 5000 kilometers. 5001 uh, is on pipeline, that A5 system is the whole country is looking forward for. And uh, these systems are the road mobile or the rail mobile versions. It's mobile. Uh, it's, uh, it can be used anywhere within the country, taken anywhere and launched from any directions uh, in uh, 360 sector. From the place where it is uh, to be launched, any direction around the 360 degree you can launch the missile. That is the capability we are built into. And uh, some of them, some of these missiles can be canister launched. That is, uh, you can keep it in a container and take out and launch within few seconds of time. And uh, we have a good cl class of guidance uh, accuracy achieved for this system. The other type is the Prithvi missiles. We have already come into induction with the Prithvi. It has uh, uh, two categories in the induction, P1 and the P2. Then we have a, a ship launched version that is the Danush. You can see the missile is uh, kept on the uh, ship uh, platform and it is fired from there against a ship. So we had uh, demonstrated so many flights of this and uh, a real success with respect to the, this uh, missiles as concerned, already with the army. The Agni systems, as I said, we have A1. Uh, the first, we started developing the A2 missile, that is 800 to 2,000 kilometer range, two-stage solid propulsion. And we have a, a re-entry maneuvering uh, control surfaces when the payload is re-entering back the atmosphere. Means it goes as high as 
600 to 700 kilometers above the atmosphere and then re-enters back uh, to the atmosphere with a velocity of almost 4,500 kilometers per second. And uh, um, with so much of force it is coming, no other, no other system can detect it or react to it or no anti-ballistic system can work on it. And during re-entry also we have uh, control system which will control and guidance which will take you, um, which will uh, deviate the path so that intended by the guidance. So the uh, enemy uh, cannot uh, judge where, uh, where the target is going to move, where the missile is going to move. It's a rail mobile version which has established and gone to the army. And then we came to the A1 system that is 300 kilometers to 700 kilometer. It's a single stage solid propulsion road mobile. Again the guidance, we had a lot of uh, the first time in the uh, country or the rather than world that a uh, single stage guidance uh, working perfectly in the atmospheric phase, the solid state uh, uh, system. So a lot of control and uh, guidance interactive uh, studies has been carried out and we could achieve pinpoint accuracy for this A1 class of systems also. Then we have A3 which is ranging up to 3000 kilometer, it's two stage uh, solid, all azimuth what I meant, the uh, all around uh, three, uh, the 0 to 360 we can cover the range, a rail mobile system. Then the A5 system which is 5000 kilometer and above and three stage solid canisterized launch, it can be carried anywhere by road and launch it from anywhere within the country. It's road mobile. I'll come to the technologies what? As you all are uh, from the engineering background or the science background, see uh, when, you, when you are asked to design a missile, we start from uh, 21 meter long, 12 meter, 15 meter, the size of the motor, diameter. So all these are the what is the first the missile configuration. How to achieve, suppose you are asked to make a 3000 kilometer range. You have to look into the uh, optimal staging. I can't carry unnecessary weight. If I ca carry unnecessary weight of 1 kg, the penalty on the system will be I will lose velocity by 1 meter per second. 1 meter per second for an A5 class, it will take away almost 3-4 kilometers from the system. So optimizing the staging is one of the main requirement for a missile design. And so you find the velocity what is required to get, uh, reach the target. Based on that, we do the staging. Then we have uh, propulsion. There are two types to uh, measure for uh, this class of missiles, either a liquid propulsion or a solid propulsion. Mm -hmm. Initially for the Agni development uh, systems, we used a liquid system. It has its own advantage that as and when uh, we have achieved the velocity required for that particular target, I can terminate the uh, uh, propulsion that is switch off either the fuel or the oxidizer, it stops burning and no more energy is added to the system. So it goes perfectly as guided by the system, it will reach the target. So that advantage is there, but the penalty is that the uh, liquid uh, type of systems has a huge bulky com uh, complex system with uh, hip, more weight and all. So we, we have to have the more weight means penalty on the range. And uh, storage the complexity of the operations. It's all uh, highly fuming uh, uh, liquid fuels which cannot be stored and kept hazardous to the uh, operating uh, people sometimes. So uh, keeping that in view, we were asked to develop a solid propulsion system. Uh, way in 1989 to 1990, we developed that system. First time in our country with a solid propellant. So we moved to, uh, after the demonstrative flights, uh, three flights of Agni, from this liquid system we moved to the solid propellant system. The challenge was to develop a guidance scheme which can, without physically terminating the propulsion burning, we have to design a guidance in such a way that that guidance makes sure under uh, all kinds of vel velocity variations it reaches the same target. So that was a task uh, given to me in that uh, initial days of when I joined the DRDO, uh, wherein which I have uh, generated the guidance uh, law. So that is based on like uh, being a solid uh, propulsion system. It's, it burns like as if we have lighted a cigarette, it keeps burning. We, unless otherwise it